As Jesus stood trial before Pilate, a, a Roman ruling official in the region of Judea, Jesus said to him that those that know truth would hear what Jesus had to say, and Pilate then immediately responds, John 18, 38, what is truth? What is truth? One of the things that I hear people tell me, I've heard people say this and I've heard people say it listening to people speaking, your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth. But what if our two truths conflict? What if they cannot operate within the same realm. I don't I choose not to believe in gravity. You choose to believe in gravity. You guess what? You're probably going to win that one. <laughs> there are things that we can reject certain ideas, but in reality, there is truth. And my truth and your truth may both be wrong. And what we need to do is figure out where's the source of truth. We need to be able to we should be able to answer the question that Pilate asked, what is truth? I'm Pastor Tim Holscher. We are looking at who is Jesus, and we have just started looking at his attribute or his characteristic of truth, that God is truth. One of the things that we think about when we think of truth is we think of God's words. And so we read in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 28, Now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are truth. And you have promised the good thing to your servant. Now notice there's a promise here. This idea of truth and the promise here is that when he's saying, when he says your words are truth, part of that is saying, and this is part of the Old Testament concept of this word truth, this word, and it's this Hebrew word over here, emeth. And that word, that idea had to do with that which was rock solid, that which was firm, that which would support, was dependable. So it was genuine. We get that idea of truth but it also has an element in it that it is then dependable because it's genuine and it's dependable. I don't know if we, we think about that sometimes with products. There's certain products over the years that have sold themselves. That if you buy the, our product right here, our product, this is the genuine article. Yeah, they're pretenders that'll make claims, but ours, we know ours will do it. And it really, they're kind of doing the same thing. Our truth claims are genuine. They're true. These other people make, well, they're questioning whether their truth claims are, are for their product are true. And in so doing, also then suggesting our product is dependable. You can depend on it to accomplish what you need. We don't know about theirs. In fact, it's highly unlikely. When we're talking about God's words being truth or God being truth, we're saying the genuine article and dependable. These are wrapped up in it. In the New Testament, when we talk about God's truth in these ways, one of the things that we find, and let's go to Revelation 21 and verse 5, and he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. The, the New Testament word for truth is built off of this beginning letter right here, that letter that looks like an A, and the last part of it. And it has the idea that A, or the alpha at the beginning of this, is negates, and then the last part of it means that which is unseen or that which escapes our attention. And it means it doesn't escape your attention. It's not unseen. It's there. God isn't saying, this is, this is the way it is, but he's fooling you. It's like a magician that you know, does a does a trick and they move things around and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I think, and here they've deceived your eye and they've made you think something that's actually not true in the whole process of their trick. And God doesn't do that. When God shows us something and God does something, he may not show us everything that's involved in something, but what he shows us is absolutely true and genuine and it can be depended on if that's what's necessary. That's the New Testament idea of truth. So it's similar to the Old Testament in the fact that you can depend on it, that it can support, but it's also true in the sense that it's the genuine article when you're looking at this thing. You're not, you're not hiding certain qualities. You're not putting a nice coat of paint on a vehicle that in reality has all kinds of horrible body damage uh, on it and hiding that. No, you're seeing it exactly as it's supposed to be. And that's the genuine thing. So that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about God's truth. And as we're saying, 
his words are true. We have that over in 2 Samuel. We have that repeated over here. It's actually a couple of different times over here at the end of the book of Revelation. God's words are, are true. He has these things. I want to look at a word that's, well, let's go over here first. So I want to go to Numbers. Uh, here in Numbers 23, then in verse 19, we have Balaam. He's in Scripture tells us he is a prophet of God, even though we kind of know he comes to a bad end, but he still is a, a prophet of God, sent by God, and God talks to him and gives him revelation. But Balaam makes this statement in verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie. That statement is something that I think maybe we don't appreciate the significance of that. But the fact is, if God makes a statement or makes it about himself or any other situation, it's accurate. It's true. God knows perfectly who he is, and he fully lives up to that. I wake up sometimes in the morning, and I've got something that I'm going to do, and I lay there going, I can't do that today. I don't feel up to it. And you lay there a while, and eventually you talk yourself into it, and you get up, and then you do it, and you're like, oh, see, I could, I could do that. But I could have just laid there in bed and said, no, I can't get that done. So God never does that. Of course, God doesn't go to bed, but you understand what I'm saying. God never faces anything and going, oh, I, I'm not up for that today. That's not, that would be unlike the nature of God. He knows that he's fully capable of all of these things. But we underestimate ourselves. I can't do that. Or overestimate. Oh yeah, I can do that only to find out we can't. We fool ourselves. In fact, a lot of times I think we as human beings, we have a tendency to tell ourselves lies because we don't want to in any way malign to ourselves our own sense of self-integrity. We want to think that we're up for that. We want to think that we can do that. And especially as we grow and mature, when we're younger, we maybe have this, this idea that we can do these things. And as we get older, we kind of think, oh, I, I've done this before. And then we find out, man, I'm not quite up to that anymore once we actually get into it and try to do those things. We have a tendency to lie to others, but also, I think, to ourselves. God doesn't do that. God knows himself perfectly. He knows fully what he's capable of doing, and he lives up to what he knows about himself, whereas we don't always assess ourselves right, and even what we do know, we don't always live up to that in these things. And that's really part of the nature of God being truth, is that he never promises anything he can't make good on. I'm going to promise this, only to realize, oh, I can't do that. I, I probably made those promises. You've made those promises. Yeah, I'll do that, only to realize, I can't actually make good on that. Other things have gotten in the way. God's never in that situation. Therefore, his words are always true because everything he promises, he fully can do and he will do if he makes that promise. It's very important for us to understand this. And he evaluates himself or knows himself in this way and lives up to that. And this is really what we're talking about when we're talking about God being truth. This ability that he's always dependable, always firm, because he is the genuine article. And he knows every aspect of who he is as the genuine article, the one true God. Worship him in this way. Worship him thinking, you're a God that you're not fooled. And you don't fool yourself and you don't tell yourself lies about yourself. You know who you are and you live up to that, which means I know that what you've told me is true, and I know that what you have said you're going to do, you are dependable to do that because that's your nature. Because you're not like us. You don't lie. These are things that are very important for you and I to understand, very important things for us to worship God about and to appreciate the fact that God is truth. I want to thank you for joining me today and encourage you to have a good day remembering who you are in Christ at the Father's right hand. Good day in the Lord.